I went to bed depressed. I woke up in the middle of the night depressed. Um, but I've woken up this morning not too depressed. And the first thing I watch on the news this morning was about people putting teddies in their window. And that was nice. But now I'm going to watch the real news and that might make me depressed. Epcot convention has already done the Lego challenge. What was the Lego challenge today? To build the rocket for NASA. I might, I might go on a walk today. I'm kind of out of my seven days from my cough that I had after the last... 14 days of isolation but I'm feeling slightly anxious about leaving the house now put my bear back in the window with his buddy. Not that anybody can see them. Happy, show me your nails. Let's see if I can do it. Look at those nails. Since I've known Matthew, which is how many years? Too many, I mean, 15, 15 years. Really? No, 14 years, since I've known Matthew, 14 years, he's never had nails because he's been a nail biter. This is the first ever time that he's had nails. I'm so proud. I did this, here we go. If you're wondering, I wash my hands before I came out and touch nothing except for my last. <laughs> make them a different colour, really, so you can find them. I'll make another mark in the bush like I did to Daddy. Contemplating when my potatoes are going to come up. Perhaps it's because you've squirted her with water. I didn't do it! <laughs> Gonna go swimming then. So it's pub quiz time again and it's clapping for the NHS and carers again, which we'll be doing in a minute. Nice to settle into some kind of routine and I think I've got a few friends doing it tonight as well so we can compare scores. I need to get my beer in actually. Can you hear the boat? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everyone who's having a birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! Hooray! Happy birthday. You want to change your answers? Yes. Well, you can't look at mine and then change your answers. Why not? <laughs> One more minute. That's how many time zones? It's 11. 
Oh. Blimey. So Russia has 11 times That's quite a lot. I haven't got a lot of swearing. I'm afraid of and threw my whole thing on the floor. I don't think it's with every game. Are you so lucky? It's a fix. Gutted as I was just washing my hands and the soap popped out of my hands and plopped down the toilet as it was flushing and disappeared. Sad times. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, I'm going to start on a personal note, actually. Uh, good to see you all well. Um, you're one of the people who've experienced coronavirus, you've been ill. Could you tell us just how, what your experience was, how you are now? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I, I do feel, I, I feel completely better now, uh, thankfully. But it was a pretty unpleasant experience, and I, I went downhill um, on um, Thursday last week, um, and uh, I, I, for a couple of nights it was very hard to uh, uh, it was very hard to sleep. Incredibly painful throat. It was like having glass in my throat. I couldn't eat or drink anything for a couple of days, um, and um, I had a bit of a cough, but not really. A, a big cough, and when you're when you're on the way down, it's really it's really worrying because we we can all see just how serious this illness is, and for for some people, the, the people who often get into the into the worst uh, of health and and those who lose their lives, it's often because the the lungs um, overreact to the virus. There's a there's an immune response. Um, and you just don't know if that's going to happen. So I found it really worrying. And then, thankfully, I, I bottomed out and stopped. Yeah, yeah, um, question for you. With parents busy homeschooling, learning to homeschool, and perhaps are looking for some inspiration, may have the answer for you in your program. So BBC Bite Size is launching a massive range of online resources to help you get the most out of your lessons. Let's find out a little more. The CBBC presenter, Karen Zorrell, is uh, with us this morning. Karen, very good morning to you. Lovely to see you. Change the subject. Yes. Um, how well do you know the Groffler? Oh, yeah, well, I've seen it live. I used to read the books to the children. So... Groffler. Well, so what? What? It's what I grow so much. This is Benji's second day Lego challenge. Is this your rocket? Yeah. Can you just show me how it works? So the guy comes down here, he hops in the lift, do 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 do. Yep. Walks into a rocket and then bam a blast. Up it goes. That's very good. But when it does cut, it's like a record. It it just Oh yeah, well it just got to the stage where they just, obviously painting on actual paper isn't suffice anymore, so it was just, do you know what, have a crack on the face, just go go for it if you want to yeah. do it. I was meant to be a cat, um, <laughs> so, but the thing was, I, was like, I'm, I'm, I was trying to like, I was getting stressed out about the mess in the house and I'm trying to like... <laughs> Tell them to clean up, but obviously my face is pink and green, and it just—it's not. It doesn't scream yeah. my for it. It's hard for me because, like, because my wife work is working from home anyway. So kind of, I get the kids up, and my youngest, Georgia, like, I'll go into her in the morning, and the first thing she says is, "No, mummy," and it's just that's no way to start a day. By half nine, you feel like you've been up for about five hours. And yeah. I'm just Tell me about it. Some days the dames seem long and some days they whiz by. And you've done nothing. The kids don't find me funny. They're like Twitter trolls. Dear Diary. Three weeks in to isolation. We have ups and downs, tears and laughs. We have good days and bad, good hours and bad in each day. We have made pots, cakes, bread, nettle soup, parachutes, cornflour, bath bombs. 
tie-dye clothes, skirts. Benji is crying because Matthew said he should do his spellings and I don't know why it's so bad. Hetty drew a leaf, which is nice, and has a blue bindi. I think I'm going slightly mad. Help. I think I am going slightly mad. <laughs> when will it be over? Tomorrow. The sun will come out. Right, copyright, 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 copyright. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Come what may, yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. And my dog smells like old dog. Did you just write, I am a poo? So looking at Facebook, people are getting very complacent now. People are going out, people aren't observing social distancing it's kind of you know the prediction the government made really that if you start things too early people can't maintain it and now they can't maintain it at a critical point when we really need to maintain it i think i just you know for those of us that can see what's happening you have to keep your head down and stay inside even if you do want to bloody kill the kids sometime. It's been one of those days. I think to keep a happy house, you try to avoid confrontation and then maybe that leads to the kids thinking they can do what they want. It's a fine line. A very fine line. I can't be asked to deal with it today. I shall leave it to Matthew. What's that screaming about? Don't ask. Well, it's not one to scream and shout all the time, is it? I think I was just saying to my little camera... That I think you and Hetty are getting a little bit spoiled with just doing what you want. And you're getting a bit rude when we are actually asking you to do things. Benji. Mum? Yeah? Miss Betty said you said me and Benji were spoiled fast. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, what I'm saying is that you're getting a little bit spoiled, I think. Well, not Benji more than you. <laughs> with doing what you want. And actually, when Daddy or somebody asks you to do something, you're quite, you're quite happy to say, no, I don't want to do it, which is a bit spoiled, bratty. <laughs> I think we need to have, listen, I think we need to have more respect for everybody in the family. The and if I have a mood swing. Don't ask why, but it was funny. <laughs> but we've all got to help. We are helping. Good. We're helping. I'm driving in the Hoover. It's been one of those days. <laughs> and lastly, I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone who is at home. Because you are giving the NHS the time to expand so that it can save lives. By staying at home, you are saving lives. We have more Nightingale hospitals planned and on the way in Birmingham and Manchester and the world.
I do find it quite patronising them telling you to stay at home and telling us how fantastic we are. Basically, I feel like a scapegoat for the government's bad decisions. And as we stand today, over 2,000 critical care beds are free and available. And they're ready should they be needed. And that's before the Nightingale hospitals come on stream. And of course, we're working round the clock to deliver essential deliveries of PPE across the whole NHS, across social care, key public services, and in all four nations of the UK. Yesterday, more than 26 million PPE products were delivered to 280... After asking my friends on Facebook whether hmm, 5 past 5 was too early for gin... They all said no, it was fine under the current circumstances. So, dinner clock it is. It's just like Hetty chilling, chilling in the pool. Yeah, who wants to come over for a pool party? Two meters apart, dig your own pool wherever you want. Oh my god, that looks so comfy. It is. I think I might just stay in bed until all this is over. So after three weeks, I'm leaving the house. the house. I feel unfit. Ah! <laughs> Hello! Peace at last. Had some time out painting the Easter day. Oh, accidentally filming. <laughs> She's so good, isn't she? Yeah. She is just beautiful. I just can't get over the perfect. So this is what happens when you're three weeks in isolation and in lockdown you end up watching bizarre life what are they called lifestyle documentaries on netflix about rich mummies in australia kind of addictive It brings the total number of deaths in hospitals for the disease now to just over 4,300. But there are suggestions that the spread of the infection is slowing. Our science correspondent, Alan Ghosh, reports. Brighton Beach would normally be packed on a day like this. But across the country, it seems that most people are following the government's instruction to stay at home. The police have been told to engage with those they suspect of breaching the guidelines by these people having a barbecue and advise them to return home. One emotional and exhausted nurse posted a video after a shift in intensive care explaining why it was so important for people to observe the guidelines. We're desperately short staff um, and things are really difficult and we're all really struggling. Um, so I'm just saying to you all to stay in. If you stay in and you don't spread it and you don't catch it, that takes the pressure off of us because um, we're all on our knees at the moment, to be fair. That sentiment was echoed at the Downing Street briefing with the news that COVID-19 had claimed the life of a young child. Our thoughts today are also with the family of a five-year-old child with underlying health conditions who tragically died. So again, you must stay at home to protect the NHS and to save lives. The latest... Garlic pesto making, wild garlic pesto making, medicine sorting. Can you put the bell tent up? Because we're bells. And we can. I want to 
can't do the hammering with the peg. Is that okay? A bee just landed right next to me. Dr. Hetty's in the house. I like my bell tent, it makes me happy. Small things, well, quite a big thing. Wild garlic pesto pasta in the bell tent with the bells. more art therapy today it's a good day today the sun is out it's easter holiday so matthew's not working so much and i kind of feel like we're making a good stomp up that hill now and hopefully the downhill journey won't be too long This is BBC One, now at 8 o'clock, Her Majesty the Queen. I'm speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time. A time of disruption in the life of our country. A disruption that has brought grief to some financial difficulties to many, and enormous changes to the daily lives of us all. I want to thank everyone on the NHS frontline, as well as care workers and those carrying out essential roles, who selflessly continue their day-to-day -day duties outside the home in support of us all. I'm sure the nation will join me in assuring you that what you do is appreciated and every hour of your hard work brings us closer to a return to more normal times. I also want to thank those of you who are staying at home, thereby helping to protect the vulnerable and sparing many families the pain already felt by those who have lost loved ones. Together we are tackling this disease and I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it. I hope in the years to come, everyone will be able to take pride in how they responded to this challenge. And those who come after us will say the Britons of this generation were as strong as any. With the attributes of self-discipline, of quiet, good-humoured resolve, and of fellow feeling, still characterise this country. The pride in who we are is not a part of our past. It defines our present and our future. The moments when the United Kingdom has come together to applaud its care and essential workers will be remembered as an expression of our national spirit and its symbol will be the rainbows drawn by children. Across the Commonwealth and around the world, we have seen heartwarming stories of people coming together to help others, be it through delivering food parcels and medicines, checking on neighbours, or converting businesses to help the relief effort. And though self-isolating may at times be hard, Many people of all faiths and of none are discovering that it presents an opportunity to slow down, pause and reflect in prayer or meditation. It reminds me of the very first broadcast I made in 1940, helped by my sister. We as children spoke from here at Windsor to children who had been evacuated from their homes and sent away for their own safety. Today, once again, 
Many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones. But now as then, we know deep down that it is the right thing to do. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavour, using the great advances of science and our instinctive compassion to heal. We will succeed, and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. But for now, I send my thanks and warmest good wishes to you all. What did you just say? Uh, she was saying her pyjamas under her dress. Stay cosy. Well, like you would do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought she was good. I like the Queen. I know lots of people don't, but... But I do. And now... Oh, you know life is good when it's the Antiques Road Show. Old people show. It can't just be me that thinks it's really weird watching people stand really close together. Why aren't they social distancing? BC, that's why. Before Corona. has been taken to hospital in Ward number 10 Downing Street is describing as a precautionary step. Our political correspondent Chris Mason is here. Uh, it's about 10 days since he tested positive for the virus. Chris, what do we know tonight? So tonight we've had a statement from Downing Street about 50 minutes ago. Uh, a number 10 spokesman telling us that on the advice of his doctor, the Prime Minister has tonight been admitted to a hospital. Restrictions ...and that a ban on outdoor exercise is possible if they are flouted. The latest figures show that 621 people died in UK hospitals in the last 24 hours after testing positive for coronavirus. That's nearly 100 fewer than yesterday. The total number of deaths across the UK now stands at 4,934. Our health editor, Keith Lane, reports. Groups of people in London today, some sunbathing. It's not acceptable, says the health secretary. The official rule is that people should stay at home unless they're taking one burst of exercise or going for essential shopping. And he warns that if the public didn't act in the spirit of the guidelines...